Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I cannot see you guys, but um, I know that you guys are there. So I think this is the first time I'm doing live streaming to conduct a, a lesson or rather a training. So uh, it is not easy because uh, I have to look at the screen and did not know whether is there any response from you guys or not. So nevertheless, uh, let's start our, our session today. So I think um, my topic today is to staying connected with your customer through the outbreak. So I think with this pandemic, uh, it changes the way we do things, especially when we, when we want to run our business, do our real estate business or agency work. Uh, we need to adjust ourselves. That's why I came up with this topic called uh, stay connected with your customer through this outbreak because I believe there's a lot of things in mind or, or as an agent that you may think that, hey, now there are so many restrictions. Uh, I do not know what can I do or what should I do. So um, I come up with some, uh, some pointers uh, to share with you guys. So um, this is a quote that I, I always share with the agents. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it is good time or bad times. Uh, I think most important is how best we make use of our time, especially in this kind of uh, period, the outbreak. So the next slide is that this is a slide, this is a, this is a picture where I were, when I was running and then I took a selfie by not looking at my camera. So I just want to encourage everyone that uh, yes, many things has happened, but uh, all things uh, come to pass. They are not here to stay at all. So this will over, okay? And the next quote I want to share with everyone is, uh, do not conform to, to the world, but uh, in any situation like this, we need to somehow or other to change our mindset. I think mindset is a very important thing that we need to have. Uh, different perspective will actually give you a different kind of result. So during this period of time, I think we need to really uh, renew our mindset. Uh, try not to do things as per what we did before the outbreak. I think things have changed. We need to also to revolve. Okay. Now, um, obstacle are opportunity. Why I say that is because um, we know that life is not a bit of roses. Everyone has a dream. We have uh, aspirations. Sometimes we get knocked down. Things happen just like that. And uh, we know that things will not simply happen or go in our way. However, uh, I think the biggest breakthrough uh, in life occurs when things are difficult. Uh, when you have a choice to fall to your worst, you also have an opportunity to rise to your best. You see some knocking on the door, right? Don't worry, that's my dog, because I think he wanted to come out and see what's happening outside here. So we should not give up easily, okay? Uh, we really just need to uh, just hold on to what we are doing and always remember that every obstacle is an opportunity. We need to learn more things during this period of time. So take this opportunity. For myself, I take this opportunity to learn more things. I start to uh, read up some, some books and uh, watch some video because I'm, I, 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 I like to do a lot of things through PowerPoint. So in this period of time, I learned a lot of new tricks. At the same time, I also pick up how to make video. So I learned how to make video. I learned how to edit video. So far, I have already edited five videos. And I think you guys have already saw two. Uh, so I think we just need to... Uh, find new ways uh, to see how we can do our business uh, during this period of time. Uh, as I mentioned just now, we need to do to change our, our, our mindset so that we can power through the obstacle in this crisis. Now, in today's digital world, um, I think it's very important to understand this. Uh, what are the strategy for us to keep our customer or to and keep engaging our customer? There are many ways of how to stay connected with our customer, especially in this outbreak. The question is, are you willing to explore more to keep your business above the water? Uh, at least to me, I know there are many strategies to help ourselves and our business to keep continue to engage with our customer uh, so that we are able to keep our customer in the loop what is happening, uh, especially in your market, in our industry, so that your customer will not forget you when this thing over. Now, what I want to share with you here is that uh, I think we all are businessmen and we do our work mostly on 
uh, internet, uh, especially this digital internet world, uh, we need to really have to see how we can increase our social media presence uh, with very good content. Uh, as we know that most of our customers are already, already on social media, like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Especially this time, uh, I can tell you they are likely to check in uh, most frequent uh, to social media because they want to see what are the latest update about the situation. So I know many of my business associate friends and their partner, and even some of the target that I served them before in the past, they are checking for opportunity on social media. Uh, you guys should be doing more on social media. I know that some people, they post a lot of uh, uh, exercise video, picture, dishes. Recently, I also put up Hockey and Me. Uh, last night, I also uh, cooked some pasta mania. I cooked some pasta mania. I cooked some pasta for, for my family. So, of course, all these picture and video are very motivated. But don't forget to communicate with your consumer on social media as well. This could be the time uh, that your customer have more times to read. And uh, whenever you post anything about property, li property listing or offering some property advice or tip, uh, they are listening, they are watching. So with all this positive content, definitely be helpful to your business on social media. So not forgetting, your customer could be waiting for you to put up anything so that your piece of uh, information can be showing up on their newsfeed. Okay? So the next thing is that start making video and live stream. As I mentioned just now, I also pick up new trick. So one of my trick is one of my things I learned is to how to make a video and edit video. Now, uh, I think it's very important. Sometimes we just need to force ourselves uh, to pick up some new trick. I know it's not easy, but the moment you go into that momentum, you will get to become simple and easy. As you know that our business involves heavily on face-to-face -face interactions. So using video to interact with our customer is another strategy. Now, OST has given everyone uh, the G Suite so that you guys can do face-to-face -face meeting with your customer, your colleague, your peers, online meeting, even doing a live streaming like what I'm doing right now. So we can use all this that has been provided to you for so many years. So come on, start using it to, to, to start to engage with your customer. So, if you are uncomfortable with the live stream that I'm doing, okay, you can just do a pre-recording video and put it onto your social media or your Facebook. Now, go digital with your customer and continue to provide your services to them. I think website is another platform that uh, we cannot uh, over, over, uh, oversight. I guess most of you have your own website and you need to provide more detail in that content onto the website, especially during this outbreak. I want to ask you guys, uh, have you subscribed to auto website in the agent app? If you have not, uh, please do so because auto website is a very fantastic tool that to allow you to, uh, to share the link to all your customers. So subscribe now. So you see why I'm talking about website because a good website should be able to share blog posts, FAQ, project information, market analysis, and even news. I know that many of our agents have created a dedicated land, uh, landing page on their website where customers can access uh, their property listing, uh, the property-related content at one place. Now, website is a very great platform to share information about our services, especially when you have exclusive listing or you have a star by list, uh, property listing, so that your customer can be aware of what are the products that you have in hand. Now, you can upload all the video that you created, uh, uh, like uh, portfolio restructuring, uh, property investment, or even some other re property related topic into your website. So, most important thing is to help them to connect with you. Please make sure that whatever thing you do in your website, please remember to include the communication channel. For example, like WhatsApp, phone, SMS, email. These are very important because without all these, how the customer can connect to you. So the next thing I want to talk about is webinar. Now, I think um, we should start to think of how to organize a small scale of webinar for your customer. I believe yourself have a, have a, a pool of customer. Okay, so I think with all the information that you have, the data, the figure, the facts and figure, 
uh, the product, especially yesterday, Christine has shared about the analytics suite. I mean, you can you can obtain all this data and uh, and information very easily right now, and to share with all your customer. And not forget things to about also our our project marketing. We have all the details and information in the Google Drive. So in order to conduct a webinar like this, is not difficult at all. Uh, so I believe the customer wants to attend this kind of webinar to gain more knowledge and updates before they commit uh, their property investment uh, after the whole COVID nineteen. I can tell you this is a good way to keep a customer, engage your customer, and uh, also able to sell your listing and project to them through this platform. Now, the next thing I want to share with you is the Google Hangout. I do not know how many of you have already tried our Google Hangout. Our Google Hangout comes with many uh, features, for example, like online meeting uh, and uh, live streaming, what I'm doing right now. Uh, you can do your screen sharing or presentation to your customer. Of course, double in. Uh, um, some customer or some of your some of the people that do not have any uh, internet access, uh, they can also use uh, this view voice call, uh, but not video, to continue to engage with you. Now, I have said so so much, and uh, I always said so many points. I think the whole gist here is to. Think about how are we able to, to plan. I think every one of us start to plan ahead of time because this outbreak will not last forever. I can tell you it's only a short period of time. Think about it. After, after this outbreak, this period of time, what's next? I, I don't want you to start to panic. Huh? Uh, another panic when the outbreak finishes. Before the, pan before the pandemic, you, you panic. After the pandemic, you panic again. No. I want you to start to imagine once the restrictions surrounding the pandemic become more relaxed or lifted up, everyone will be back and they will go back how things used to be before. As a property agent, we should not only get prepared when the outbreak gets worse. We need to come up with good strategy of how to get ahead of the game once the improvement comes into light. Now let's think about how are you able to build more excitement uh, with your customer, existing customer, when the circuit breaker is over. Start to think how to come up with a new campaign to make up for the loss after the whole outbreak. Now, what are the concerns your customer would probably have that you could help? I think this is one of the concern that uh, most of the uh, customer or agent are facing also. They want to know uh, during this period of time, okay, uh, how how can can my property agent um, lend a lending hand to advise me what should I do during this outbreak with my property? Uh, your customer may want to find out more from you as a, because you are his property agent. So they want to know uh, are there any ways that they can explore to use your property to tide over this crisis? So I'm going to share two two ways of doing it. Okay, um, that's why this is to help you to how to stay connected uh, with your, stay connected with your customer. Now, today I'm going to share with you two things, equity term loan and refinancing. Now, what is the equity term loan? Now, the equity term loan, or some sometimes we call it equity home, uh, uh, home equity loan. This is the type of loan where you see equity of your property as a collateral. Collateral. Okay, in order to apply for the equity term loan, the property uh, needs to have an increase in value over time. An equity term loan may be the best way to borrow some money at lowest interest rate for now, if I see it that way. Okay. Now, how, how do we um, elaborate? <laughs> As I mentioned just now, that um, your property must have certain value over the time. So, for example, that you bought this property at $1 million maybe a few years ago or many, many years ago. So, from the day you buy this property until today, they must have an increase in value. Okay? So, the value of a property at present day must have sufficient increase in value over what, it has, what the customer has bought. Now, second point is, the customer is able to loan a portion 
that increase in value on top of their existing loan. Third, the customer is borrowing from the portion of the property that is fully paid. And this is also known as cash out refinancing or mortgage equity withdrawal loan. So your customer can do this even if they haven't paid off their home loan. Now my next question is, who is eligible for a home equity loan? Okay, owner of a private property or HDB owner? Okay, only the owner of a private property are eligible to take home equity loan. Okay. The owner own an EC, are they able to apply for equity loan as well? They have to wait for MOP of five years run out before they can apply for the equity loan. You can all you can you can you can only get an equity loan uh, from the same bank if you have not fully paid off your whole housing loan. Okay, so this is the thing that you need to be aware of. And you ask me how much is the interest? I have checked with some of the bankers before this session. Uh, it's very okay. So it's from 1.5 to 1.75. And it all depends on the loan size, the size of the loan that the customer is taking up. Now, how much can we borrow on a home equity loan? Okay, so uh, the bank will only allow you to take up up to not more than 70% uh, of the property value that you have gained, okay? And uh, minus any outstanding loan amount, as well as the CPF money that you use for the property purchase. Now, Singaporean, uh, if they are retiree Singaporean, they are not limited to PDSR. If they borrow 50% or less of the property value, now, this is just an illustration to you. Uh, assuming, uh, assuming that let's say Vincent wants to get a term loan and he is eligible for to, to borrow up to 90,000. Now, how it works is that his term loan, okay, must be term loan plus outstanding loan is less than 50% of the property value. Then he will not have to worry about PDSR. Okay, so in this illustration, it says that, okay, the person Vincent can only loan up to 70% of the property value, which is only 840000 And from the chart itself, you can see that he has an outstanding loan of 400000 So he had to minus away 400000 and uh, minus away the CPF money. Okay, so that will come up to 90000 So that is the amount that Vincent can loan. So he may not have to loan the full 90000 He can loan for partial of 90000 then what is the loan tenure for a housing? Uh, sorry, what is the loan tenure for a home equity loan? Well, this is just an example. Okay, it's 75 years minus your age, minus the number of years spent servicing your existing loan. Then that it will be your loan tenure. Now don't quote me because you still need to check with the banker because uh, there are many different scenarios and situations. So different customer, they have different scenario, different situations. So it's better to check with a customer, us, uh, check with the bankers. Okay. So my next question to you is that can I utilize my CPF money to pay off my home equity loan? So I pause here for what for you to think. Can you? The answer is no. Okay. Now what is the what are the pro and con of having a home equity loan? Okay, so um, the pro are the interest is low. Okay, I believe this is one of the cheapest loan uh, because the interest rate is about 1.5 to 1.75. And uh, we know that most of the bank will only allow you to borrow up to four times of your income. Okay, let's see, you take up some personal loan. Okay, but for, for home equity loan, they allow you to, to, learn, to loan more than that. Okay, and uh, you don't have to sell off your property. So um, what are the con? The con are the property become a collateral, okay? And uh, if you fail to pay the loan, the bank will take over the property. And of course, you must have a very high discipline because if you don't have a discipline, uh, you will be overstretched yourself, you will spend, overspend money. 
and not forgetting that whatever come with a home equity loan, right, you have to factor in as well the legal fee as well because the legal fee can be very high. It also depends on the loan size and the type of property. Okay. Okay, the next thing I want to share with you guys is refinancing. Okay, so refinancing is to give your customer an opportunity to switch your, your housing loan uh, to another bank for a low interest rate. So that by doing this, this will help your customer to save money in the long run. I mentioned in the long run. Okay, so refinancing the housing loan may be seen to be one of the options during this time. So, um, as we, as, we, as we know that uh, refinancing is usually done when we hit the fourth year of our housing loan. This is because uh, a typical housing loan package, uh, they will raise their interest after three years. So this could be probably the best time for your customer to see if, if there any bank or another bank can offer them uh, uh, a lower interest rate. Now, what are the benefits of having a uh, refinancing? Okay. Um, of course, we are looking at better interest rate. Uh, refinancing helps to save money when it comes to a housing loan. In order not to pay more than you should for your customer of the housing loan, uh, we need to refinance every two to three years, provided the interest rate is attractive enough. So you can advise your customer to refi refinance their housing loan to get a better interest rate. But uh, only advise your customer to do that, to do a refinancing if the current housing loan interest is high. Because some of housing loan interest rate can be as high as 2.5%. So uh, some interest rate yeah, can be go as high than 2.5%. Sometimes some buyer who were tied to a floating rate when they first bought a property. And now I think it's time to switch to a fixed rate so that they can better plan and manage their finances. So by doing that, uh, their fixed money repayment will also uh, give them a sense of security. So when the customer refinance their housing loan with a lower interest rate, this means that they also get a lower monthly installment. So this one will also help them in manage their finances. Okay. So point number three, refinance the whole the housing loan definitely also uh, to improve the cash flow because you extend the land, the loan tenure. So how much can we save by refinancing our housing? This is a very big question that all agents must know. Don't just blindly go and advise your customer go and do a refinancing. Sometimes it may not be helpful at all. Okay, so I have did one demonstration using our financial calculator in our Asian apps. So take this as a case study that Simon has me, uh, I have an outstanding housing loan of 500,000 uh, with about 18 years left. So that means I still got outstanding housing loan uh, for the next 18 years. So my current interest rate is 2.5% and I need to pay 2,877 every month. Okay? But in order to for me to do a refinance, I have to make sure that the interest rate is low. So I have to make sure that I refine my housing loan with a bank that provide me with a very low interest rate. So assuming I got a very good rate, 1.65 for the first two years. So I need to only pay 2,677 a month. So the difference uh, between my old package and the new package is $200 a month. So one year I saved 2,004. Three years, I saved 7,000. Okay, this is another illustration to give you a better understanding how it works. So look at the old, the current loan package, which is my old package, 500,000, 2.5%. My estimated monthly installment is 2877. So after I refinance with a new package with another bank, okay, 500,000, 1.6%. 1.65%, my money installment is 2,666. 2, so how much did I save? Okay, so this is a breakdown. So I have saved, sorry, I have saved $200 per month. Okay, so the next thing is, is there any cost for refinancing? 
definitely yes. As I mentioned just now earlier on, uh, we have to also factor in the legal cost, uh, the variation fee, uh, or the repayment penalty. Because sometimes when the customer do not understand or we have, uh, uh, we do not know do they have a locking period, so they may be refi their housing loan with another bank uh, before their old package locking period is up. Then there will be a repayment penalty. Okay, so these are the things you need to also consider in. Okay, so I also want to share with you one thing is that some bank they will subsidize some of the costs. Okay, now how do they subsidize? Most of the bank they were based on zero point four percent of the loan quantum, but some of the bank they will give cash rebate. So when the bank give cash rebate or give out this kind of, this kind of uh, subsidy, right? It actually helps the customer to defray off their costing. So for example, if I take a loan of 500,000 and my subsidy is based on 0.4% of 500,000, which is $2,000. And if my legal fee came up to about 2002, I only need to pay that $200, okay? Okay, let's take a look. So this is how it works. Uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, I'm going to give you two scenarios. One is be based on 300,000, one based on 500,000 loan. And you see whether is it worth to do a refinancing. If let's say your, your outstanding amount is only 300,000. Uh, so based on this illustration, we understand that, yes, look at the, the A illustration. 300,000, interest rate 2.5%. Yes, you refi your housing loan to 1.65. And you got a saving of $120 per month and you amount up to $3,006 for the three years. But after we minus all the legal fee, the variation fee, you only say $600. Do you want your customer or yourself to go through that kind of hassle just to save that $600? Then compared to B pack B, B scenario, $500,000, 1.6%, and the breakdown, and you save $200 per month, three years, $10,200. So minus of the uh, legal fee, variation fee, you save 3006 Now, I'm only using this as an illustration. If your customer have a loan of more than 500000 the saving is huge. Okay? Now, before I end my, my talk here, uh, it's almost about half an hour, I just want to share with you these five, 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 uh, three five rules that I came up with myself. Okay? So, how to make use of these three five rules when you are doing a refinancing of your housing loan? Okay, these three five rules break down into three and five, three possibility and five consideration. So what are the three possibility? Okay, the first possibility is that you need to understand and to help the customer to check, is it better to stay with the existing housing loan package? Please don't refinance uh, because someone says so or someone did it for the sake of refinancing. No, you really have to look into it. Is it worthwhile? Second, check with the bank, okay? Um, do, they, do, they, do they have or do they able to provide or shift, a, shift your current loan to a new loan package with the existing bank? So this is what we call the repricing because for after some certain period of time, right? Uh, you may want to check back with your existing bank are they able to do a repricing? Ah, then that will also help to bring down your interest rate if they are able to. Point number three, ah, then you've got to think of is refinancing with another bank, a different bank is better because they provide you a lower interest rate. So these are three possibilities. Well, what are the five considerations? <clears throat> First, you need to see if the interest rate is rising if the interest rate is rising, then you need to make sure that you don't move. Because it's not worth to shift your housing loan to another bank whereby they are giving you a high interest rate. Okay? So, second thing is to calculate, okay, what are the tangible benefits? To calculate what are the savings. As I mentioned and I showed you some of the illustration earlier on, how much do you save? Is the benefit big or small? Three, lock-in period and charges. These are the considerations you need to take into it as well. Because when we sign up any package with a bank, if you have a lock-in period, there's a lock-in period, and uh, have you have the lock-in period come to the end? Or if let's say it has not come to the end and you want to, to, 
to terminate your loan package early will there be any charges ah then what are the subsidy provided by the bank so these are the things that you need to also know as i mentioned some bank offer up to 0.4 percent subsidy some even give you a, a cash rebate to subsidize you and the last one is to watch out for the refinancing regulation okay now if you ask me is tdsr affected we need to take into consideration the tdsr okay well for refinancing it depends on a different bank it depends on different bank okay for example if it's a owner occupied property some bank don't even need to see your income statement or income document why because when you first bought a the property they already did a tdsr uh, assessment for you so they don't need but some bank they were still based on tdsr based on 100 percent and some bank can come up all the way even to 200 percent now even the borrower himself uh, or herself has to be clean uh, that means that uh, they did not default in any repayment at all uh, so then the bank will see this person as clean person then i think the chances of getting uh, a loan is much higher okay so um tdsr is still straight uh, don't forget it because especially for those people who are buying a property okay so i come to the end of my session so um thank you for paying attention throughout these 30 minutes i to be frank with you guys i really really miss you guys um to be frank also i think it is not easy to work from home uh, in the past when i work at the office i can manage my time well but when i came home to work from home i can tell you um, i need to adjust i think everyone need to adjust and sometimes i even work all the way to midnight i think this should not be the case at all so no matter how it is we have to try to adjust our time and uh, adjust and renew our mind and uh, always come up with a new initiative to see how we can continue to connect with our customer okay so uh i will not take up most parts of your time i'll see you guys soon back in the office Bye.